Hi everyone, this is Miss Fitzgerald and Miss Hagra. Today we're going to be learning about 7.1, Exploring Exponential Models. Let's talk about exponential growth first, yes? Okay, so exponential growth has the form y equals a times b to the x. And notice that only the b has the x. We have an a and a b. So b is what we call um, the, the base. The base. Um, B will always be bigger than 1, and A has to be greater than 0. So exponential decay is the exact same thing, except the requirements are different. We have our B value is going to be a fraction between 0 and 1, but notice that A is also still bigger than 0. So for both exponential growth and decay, your A is a positive number. The difference has to do with the B, of whether it's exponential growth or decay. I love it. Hey, Ms. Hygert, would you mind showing them what just a generic exponential growth might look like? Sure. Generally, from left to right, exponential growth is going to grow, and exponential decay is going to decay, decrease. De no, <laughs> just kidding. So I erase that if you drew it. Here's the truth. Instead of going up from left to right, what should it do instead, beautiful people? It should go down. It should go down from left to right. So we're gonna fix that really quickly. Okay, it's gonna go down from left to right. That is. Beautiful. Okay, what else? Um, there is a funny little word there. It says asymptote. Um, so both of the equations actually have an asymptote. And an asymptote in this case is going to be a horizontal line and the graph is going to approach it. So you see how our graph is getting closer and closer to this horizontal line? Yes. And the same with exponential growth. It's also going to have a horizontal line, which is your asymptote. So our function is going to get closer and closer and closer and closer to the asymptote, but it's never going to touch it, and it's never going to cross it. Yep, I get that. It's like that little sibling that always puts their hands in your face, and they're like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, but it's still irritating. It's all outdoors. Okay, so without graphing, we are going to determine if the function represents exponential growth or decay. Then we're going to find the y-intercept. So this is where we're looking at our a and our b values. So remember what the value of a needed to be and b needed to be. So we have our a value and then our b is the one that has the exponent. So in both exponential growth and decay, a needed to be positive. Excellent. So we have positive here. We have a positive a here. We have a positive A here. And then the last one, dun, dun, dun. A is less than zero. So which means it's neither growth nor decay. That's the truth. Okay, so we know that's neither. Um, I think that we should probably talk about how to tell if it's going to be growth or decay. I remember that you told me from the first slide over there that the B is what I'm going to be looking at once we've determined that it can be either growth or decay. So once we, oh, you've, okay. So for growth, we're going to see if B is bigger than 1, or for decay, we're going to see if it's a fraction between 0 and 1. Right. Or decimal, but normally a fraction, yeah? Yes. yes. Okay. okay, so I highlighted what B was. So B <laughs> is the one with the X for all of them. So in this first one, it's a decimal in this case between 0 and 1. So would that be growth or decay? Decay! Decay! Because it's less than 1 and bigger than 0. Because your B... <laughs> Abracadabra, that worked out really well. B was less than that. Okay, part B. Um, we did determine that it could be growth or decay. The B for this one is 17. Therefore, this is exponential growth. Because our B is bigger than 1. Okay, in C, we have 11 over 5, which is a fraction. Um, is that number bigger than 1? No. Are you sure? Yes. No, I'm just kidding. It is bigger than 1. Therefore, this is an example of exponential growth. Da, 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 da. So here's the thing, though, guys. Pay attention. This one is decay. It's not a fraction, but that's okay because it's less than 1 and greater than 0. The next one, huge number. Even though the A is a fraction, no one cares. We just care that it's positive. We're looking at the B only. And then this, for part C, yes, it's a fraction, but it's a fraction that's bigger than 1. All right. Okay, take a moment, press pause, and this is your warm-up for the graphing portion of this. So complete these problems on your graphing calculator and compare them. So great job, Miss Heiger, for graphing these on Desmos. And you all should have these graphs, one of the color-coded for us. 
So the first one we have is y equals 2x, which is in purple. And I went ahead and plotted these two points, which we'll see are some important points. So it's going through 1, 2. Notice that the 2 is the one with the x, and 1 is actually the coefficient out front. My orange graph, 1 third times 2 the x, it's being going through 1 third, and then over here it's going through 2 thirds. So notice that my 1 third is my a value, and then 2 thirds comes from 2 times 1 third. And then my black one is y equals 3 times 2 the x. It's going through 1 comma 6 over here and also 0 comma 3. So it's going through 0 comma a, which is our 3 value, and 1 comma a times b, which is 1 comma 6. And those are going to be the key points for our graphs. So what we saw from these first ones, when we have the general form y equals a times b to the x, when we have our a and our b, the y-intercept is always going to be at 0 comma a, and the 1 value is always going to go through a comma b, a times b. Okay, it makes sense to me, because if the x is 0, then I can just plug in 0 for x, and then b to the 0 is 1, a times 1 is a. That's delightful. And then the same thing for if the exponent here is 1, then it's just a times b to the first power. That's just a times b. So we I just have to remember to plug in x equals 0 and x equals 1. Those are the two easy numbers to plug in. I would love those, po those coordinates for the rest of my life. So what about when a is negative? Then we have, oh. These ones over here. So yes. let's go back to the graphs and look at what happens when a is negative. Oh. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to look at y equals 2 to the x here, which is the one up here, and then I have negative one-fifth to the x, which is green, and notice that it's a reflection across the x-axis here. And then negative five times two to the x is also a reflection across the x-axis. So Ms. Fitz, when your a value is negative, what do you notice? We have a reflection about the x-axis. Excellent. That's right. Uh, we, when a is negative, we have a reflection on the x-axis. Let's talk about the domain and range. Okay, so let's go back to the graphs. Okay, the domain, Ms. Fitz, is that x or y? The domain, Ms. Hygra, is the x values. Okay, so notice it has x values for all of these. It's going to go off to negative infinity, and it's going to be really, really close to that asymptote. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to go up and up and up and up, or down and down and down, but it's continuing in the x values all the way out to positive infinities. So the domain is all real numbers for the x's. That's, That's all of them. Right, because I can put any value in there for an exponent. An exponent doesn't have any restrictions. Now, that's going from left to right. What about up and down? So when I had just these positive ones, look that it's never going below the asymptote because it's approaching the asymptote but never crosses it. So it's always bounded by this asymptote. So it's always above the asymptote. So right now our asymptote is this horizontal line, y equals 0. So it's all our function is always bigger than that. Mm -hmm. So the function's range would be y is greater than 0. Mm -hmm. Or when we had the graphs that had the reflection when our a was negative, oops, back to the graphs, when the a's are negative, we have that they're always down here in the negative values, and the range goes down to negative infinity and goes up and has this upper bound of y equals zero for the asymptote. So the range is y is less, less than, than zero. Excellent. Let's go back to the presentation. Okay, so the domain, all real numbers, range, two scenarios, y is greater than zero if a is positive, and y is less than zero if a is negative or less than zero. Now the horizontal asymptote for those examples that we just saw was y equals zero. Is it always going to be like that, Ms. Hygra? No, it's not, because as you're going to see on the next slide, we're going to have shifts. We're going to shift our graph up and down, and that's going to affect our asymptotes. Okay. So our first example, graph, find the domain and range, and write the equation for the asymptote. So here's our equation. And notice that we have this extra plus one there. And what that is, is we have a horizontal shift. So it's always going to be x minus h, so it's minus the horizontal shift. So in this scenario, we're going to have a shift left one. And then if there's a big number outside, which we don't have there, then it would be an up-down shift. So if it was like a big plus five, then it would be a shift up five. But the horizontal shift is always in the opposite direction. So we have a shift left one. So our base function is always the function without the shifts. So in this scenario, it's y equals 2 thirds times 2 to the x. And we're going to use our generic key points that we're always going to have. So in this particular example, Ms. Fitz, it's 0, a, which is 
two thirds. Two thirds and one comma. So two thirds times two is four thirds. Perfect. Or one and one third. Good. Should we so, graph those? Yeah, so let's go ahead and graph those. Zero comma two thirds and four thirds. So it's in thirds, so why don't I just make each one of these one third? So one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds. And then my x can go by ones. So I have to label my scale, don't I? Yes, thank you for doing that. Because you know I would take out points for my kids. Would you do the same? Totally. Yeah. Okay, so I'm labeling my points, mm -hmm. and I have my scale established. So generically, what would this look like? Can you give me a little sketch? Sure. Oh, I see your, your horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. It's close to the asymptote. We have the smooth curve that goes through both of those dots. Yes, it does. <laughs> Sometimes you have to make your dots a little bigger. Okay, so this is my base function, y equals 2 thirds times 2 to the x. Cool. Now what I love for students to do is to either change the ink color to make the shifted function another color, or to dash that first line, because it's not really the graph, it's just our guide, yeah? Yes. Okay, so let's talk about the shifts. We're talking about h and k. h is the horizontal shift. Because we switched the sign for h, we said it was left 1. K, you said we don't have one, so you're not moving up or down. So from each of those key points, let's move to the left, to the left, one. And then I have to move my asymptote left one, which really doesn't do it, do anything. But I have to remember if I were to go up and down, mm -hmm. to remember to shift my asymptote up. So my asymptote stayed the same. And now I'm going to do my smooth curve going through those two dots. This is super smooth. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And that is my final answer. There. Good. What about the domain? So the domain is always going to be all real numbers. Always, always. And the range? Um, because I didn't have any shifts, it's going to be y is greater than 0, and my asymptote stayed put, so it's still y equals 0. Mm -hmm. And then for growth and decay, what do we look at again? I can look at the graph and see that it's going up, but if I couldn't, I would look at the a so and b. A is positive, <laughs> and my b is bigger than 1. So I know it's growth. growth. But as Ms. Fitz said, since it's going up from left to right, it's growth. Okay, Ms. Fitz, let's graph the next one. What is the base function? The base, base function is y equals negative 3 to the x, because it's the same thing, but no plus, no minuses. Key points? Um, the key points is going to be 0, comma a, but I don't really see an a. I don't see there. an a either. However, that negative sign is telling me something. It's like y equals negative 1 times 3. Thank you for writing that for us, Ms. Hygra, because now we can see the A and the B clearly. So my key point would be 0, negative 1. And the other one would be 1, negative 3, because negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Those are key points. So as we graph those, and as you graph those, um, you have them, and then you have your base function. And she, oh, look at you dotting for us. Thank you so much. That, it's awesome. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about these shifts. So we have x plus 1 again, so that is a shift left or right? Left, because you change the sign for the left and right one every single time, so and it's left 1. big negative 2 is... Down 2. Okay, so I'm going to shift left 1 and down 2. I'm going to go left 1 and down 2. What about my asymptote? Do I need to do anything with that? Yeah, so... Your asymptote now is going to be y equals k for the general form. It was the horizontal one at y equals 0, so now since you went down 2, let's move it down 2. So the asymptote was at y equals 0, and now I'm going to shift it down 2, and this is where the asymptote is, going through the y-axis at negative 2. Right. Okay, so let's connect our dots with a smooth curve. It's very smooth. Make sure our dots are visible. And what do we have to do to our axes, Ms. Fitz? Label them. Label them. So all of your key points need to be labeled. Okay. What else do we need to do? Uh, domain is all real numbers again. Range, because it is all below that asymptote, is going to be y is less than negative 2. And because the a was negative, this is neither. So as she circles out, hey guys, do us a favor. Press pause right now and go ahead and try the next two examples on your own. Okay, we hope you pause. Here's what we're going to do. The base function is y equals 2 times 3 to the x. The key points are 0, 2, and 1, 6. Our shifts were right 2 and up 1. Domain was all real numbers. Range, y greater than 1. Asymptote, y equals 1. Growth. Okay, so then she connected her dots, she shifted, and bam, there you have it. Press pause. With this one, make sure it matches, and then you're all good. Thank you.